All right, so this is where we left off in the previous episode. We did the glazing, we did the glass windows, and we kind of did a bit of indicative framing over here with the steel. What I'm going to do now is the water shader, and this is kind of a um, quite a challenging shader, but I'll walk you through it from step by step, my exact node setup. So we've created a plane of water here. If I go to plane, and what I'm going to do is create a, just a simple plane for now, and then we are going to apply a kind of a wave modifier to it. So this is going to be the water level here. So let's just put that here. Cool. And we're just going to actually put this. Let's go in here. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Great. So let's just get the shader set up first and then we can worry about the geometry. So if we go new, we're going to call this water. And I've got a node set up from a previous job and I literally just use the same material for all my projects because it just works. So we're going to delete the principled BSDF. We're going to go into a mix shader. Oh, that's the wrong one. Great. Let's chuck that into the surface and then volume. We're going to do a volume absorption. down here all right and so we want a transparent bsdf to be going into the mix shader so let's do that so we're going to chuck the bsdf into the second part of this mix shader and this volume absorption we just want this to be 0.1 and we want a multiply math nodes so we want to type in math uh, yep, and we want to chuck that into the color of the transparent BSDF. So we'll change this to multiply. And we want to create a color ramp. So let's go color ramp. And let's chuck the color into the first value. And then we're going to go three for the value to start out with. And if we... We want to go click on here on the black bar of the color ramp and we, we, we just want to make this white. And we see kind of this bar at the top. We want to have three of these. So let's click on the plus now that we have three. Let's move the middle one in here and then let's keep the black on here. But we're just going to change the color. So to change the color, you double click and then we're going to go black. So you can see we've kind of got the same gradient going on here. And uh, I actually want another one in here. So let's click plus. So I've got th one black one at the end. So I've got one black one at the end. And then we want to create a gray one as well. So let's just kind of go here. Maybe that's a little bit too gray. I think that's pretty good. So let's go layer weight. Let's type in layer weight. And we're just going to check the facing into the factor of the color ramp. And that blending is good. Cool. So we've got kind of that long string of nodes. And we want to do a glass BSDF. And let's chuck the BSDF into the first mix, uh, into the first plug in the mix shader. And we want to change this into 1.333 for the IOR. And that's just the angle that light hits the water. And we can change this to kind of a turquoisey color if we want, just very, very subtle. Let's chuck a light path in here. And let's go shadow ray into factor. Perfect. So if we go into cycles mode now, we can have a look at what we've done. And you can see If I apply maybe um, a material under here, you'll see the material underneath. So if I apply like a brick 
for example. You should see this brick material underneath, but it's kind of got a bit of a turquoise tint to it. And the next stage we want to do, if I get rid of that material for now, is we actually want to create a few waves here. All right, so what we want to do to get a nice wavy kind of um, surface on the water is we want to click on our plane. We want to go to modifier and we're going to go ocean. We're going to create a ocean modifier and you can actually do this in viewport shading. It's probably better. Um, it's kind of going to make it really massive. So what we want to do to start out with after we've applied, after we've created a ocean modifier is we want to go to spectrum and we want to change this to shallow water. And then we just want to shrink this right down. Okay, so if we look out into the viewport, um, we just want to make sure that we are, let's just hide this real quick. Um, let's just hide this. So we want to see, we want to make sure that we see um, all of the water, all of the pool water essentially. And I think that's pretty good. So we've got the spectrum to shallow water. We want to change the depth to one meter because it is just a very shallow pool. And the resolution of the render, we want to change to maybe 12. It's going to be nice, nice and big. And then the waves, we can kind of change the scale right down because we actually, <laughs> we actually don't want like a really choppy, um, you know, ocean we just want like a real minimal kind of pull even that's probably too much let's go 0 0.05 yeah that's nice so you can see it's just a bit of subtle kind of variation and this is really just a reflection pull so we don't want anything too hectic cool so that's looking pretty good so far so if we go back into render mode you will see it kind of starting to come together, but there are actually a few things that we want to do further. So in the light setups, we want to go to, because we've set the HDRI up, we want to actually go to, uh, oh, actually it's in world. We want to go to, um, we want to go to settings, surface, and we want to go shadow caustics. And caustics are when light passes through an object and it creates kind of a nice effect of re refraction on the object it's casting on. So we want to go back to this light material now that we've enabled caustics. And let's go to object and we're going to go to shading and we're going to go cast shadow caustics. So this is going to enable the water to cast light from the sun onto the base of the pool. And we actually want to do the same for this. So we want to go to the object properties into shading and we want to go receive shadow caustics. Perfect. You can see that actually changed color now because the light is passing through to the object below and it's actually receiving it. So one more thing that we want to do is just create a quick material. Let's go mark seam, apply all transforms. We're going to go unwrap. Perfect. And let's go set my TD to 20.48. I did this all in previous episodes for this project. If you are unsure on how to make a material, check those out. And then I'm just going to apply a polygon texture. You can use polygon with a link in the description if you want to check it out. And if I go to my collection, I'm just going to apply a nice concrete. Let's just have a little look in what I've got here. Um, I think there should be something. Yeah, so let's try, let's try concrete polished. That's pretty good. So if we go back into our camera view, you can see we've got really nice reflections and you actually don't want to see directly through because at the angle we're looking at, you're not going to really see the pool below. So if I go up, you can kind of see the concrete underneath, but you're not really seeing that when you go at a sharper angle, if that makes sense. So as we go on a more sharp angle, you start to see 
the brick uh, wool in front of it. And that's actually perfect. That's what we want. One last thing that we want to do before we sign off for this episode is we're going to create a pool edge. So I don't actually want concrete to come all the way. Uh, I don't want brick to come all the way down to the to the water. I actually want concrete to kind of like come to the edge of the water and then brick to start. And I think that's just a little bit more realistic. So we're just going to create kind of this concrete nib here. And the water can kind of come against it. So I think that's pretty good. Let's just do something like that. Just, just so the water kind of comes up to it. And let's do the same thing. We're just going to go mark seam. We're going to go apply transforms. And unwrap. Texel density. Set my TD. And we're going to just go over to the shader and we're going to go on the same one that we've got in the, on the floor. So that's going to be pretty good for now. I'm going to do the same thing, rotate 90 degrees, and I just want that to be on the edge here as well, even though you're probably not going to see it. But it's just a nice touch, I think. Cool. All right, so let's go back into this mode real quick. Let's turn back on the glass. Actually, I'm going to call this glass. And let's go back into our cycles mode. Perfect. I think that's looking really, really nice so far. Um, and what I think I'll do just as a sign off on this episode is I'm going to select both of those. I'm going to mark the seams. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I've just done. Set my TD. And we're just going to apply a simple concrete polish to that. And I think that will just finish off kind of this nice, this nice starting scene before I start to put furniture and stuff. And in the next episode, I'm also going to be looking at doing a nice timber batten ceiling using procedural textures, which is going to be really, really fun. I love doing with procedural textures. It's just a lot of fun, and it's just completely unlocks creativity because you don't have to mess around with UV maps and you fight against um, tiling and everything like that. So I'm really, really excited for that. And make sure to check out my Instagram at Oliver Higgins Architecture, just if you want to see the kind of work I do as a professional. And you can also check out my Discord. There's a link in the description. You can share your work and get feedback from me and the community. And it's a great place to grow as a 3D artist. So I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers.